Yep, we're starting. One second. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Welcome to Insight to Islam. This is our Zoom um, session. Today's topic is an insight into seeking your livelihood from Allah's blessings. Now, the reason why we're discussing this topic is because we can see during this COVID lockdown, people are stressing concerning their income, how they're going to survive. So to shed some light on this, we have our brother, Ismail Fraser. Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum salam wa rahmatullah Okay, so if you want to start with the topic, inshallah, we're going to speak for about 35 minutes, and then after that, we'll have some questions and answers. So without further ado, Fadl Sheikh. Alhamdulillah, wa salatu wa salam ala rasulillah wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa man wala. Amma ba'd. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh, brothers and sisters. Um, this topic, how to earn your livelihood from Allah's blessing, um, is a topic that takes its premise first and foremost from the Quran and the Sunnah. Um, as Allah has said um, in the Quran, in this translation, the security of Quraysh. Their security in journeying, in journeying by winter and summer. Let them worship the Lord of his house, who provides them with food against hunger and makes them safe against fear. So this is Allah telling the Quraysh how he provided them and he mentioning the, the trade. And Allah Azzawajal, he said in his book, translation, men whom neither business nor sell can divert them from the remembrance of Allah, nor from regularly, regularly performing salat or from giving charity. Allah also says, O oh, you who believe, do not consume your property among yourselves wrongfully, but let there be trade by mutual consent. And do not kill yourselves. Indeed, Allah is ever merciful to you. And whoever does so, in enmity and injustice, we shall cast him into the fire. And that is easy for Allah. So Allah Azawajal, he encourages livelihood by working with your hands and abstaining from begging. Allah, the exalted, says in this Surah, Surah al Jummah, when the Jummah, the Salat prayer is ended, you may disperse through the land and seek the bounty of Allah by working. The Prophet Sallallahu said, were you to put your complete trust in Allah, he would provide for you as he provides for the birds. They issue forth and they go out hungry in the morning and they return filled in the evening, related by Tirmidhi. Zabir ibn Awam, may Allah be pleased with him, reported the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam saying, it is far better for you to take your rope Go to the mountain, cut some firewood, carry it on your back and sell it and therefore save your face then begging from people whether they give you or whether they refuse. So here, as compared to beggary, the hadith, the ahadith of Rasulullah Sallam, he puts an emphasis on hard work. However, pe people look down on working hard. It is certainly better than seeking charity, and it's certainly better than, than, than begging. And it brings about self-respect, dignity, where begging brings about you know, shame, shamefulness and, 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 and humiliation. So Islam stands for delivering man from indignity and teaches him to keep his sense of dignity. Abu Huraira, radiallahu an, said, the Prophet Muhammad وسلم, said, Prophet Dawood وسلم, ate only out of that which he earned through his work. And Abu Huraira, radiallahu, this is from Bukhari, and, and Abu Huraira radiallahu an, said, the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa said, Prophet Zakaria was the carpenter, Bukhari. Abu Huraira radiallahu an, reported, that the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, no food is better to man than that which he earns through his manual work. Dawood, the Prophet of Allah, only ate the earnings from his manual work. Dawood was a, was, Dawood was a maker of coats of mail and shields. Adam was a farmer, nor a carpenter, 
Idris a tailor. This is Prophet Idris. Idris. And Moses a shepherd. And reported by Al-Hakim. I had Moses, Moses was also a ruler. Abu Huraira related that the messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said A time will come when people Will not care Whether what they are acquiring Is lawful or unlawful Legitimate or illegitimate Bukhari So we have Habil The son of Adam was a hunter His brother who killed him Qabil was a farmer um, We have Yusuf Who was skilled in treasures And land assets Suleiman Salatu Salam in building architecture and the like. Khadija, our mother, the first person to accept Islam after the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was a trader, Rajila Wanha. The Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam himself was a trader, as well as being a shepherd when he was younger. Abu Bakr Siddiq, the foremost in Islam, the foremost companion after the Prophet Muhammad وسلم, was a trader. Umar Rajalahu An also was a trader. Uthman ibn Affan was a trader. Abdurrahman bin Auf was a trader. On the whole, the Muhajirun were traders. The Ansar were farmers. Salman al Farisi used to make rugs with his hands and he would sell. And he said, I will always make rugs. He would make one, he would keep. One, he would keep for his livelihood. One, he would sell. And then the other one, he would give in charity. So when we look at what happened in the seventh century, we see that the Muslim tradesmen, that they, they went abroad and they interacted with other nations, which resulted in further expansion into non-Muslim territory. And so Islam mingled with the people um, important coastal cities in the in the Indian subcontinent, China, um, the more, the distant lands like modern Indonesia, Philippines, Singapore, and Malaysia. Islam spread into those areas um, through non-aggressive or non-violent means. Um, so this this first happened within the seventh centuries, and it was the Muslim merchants from the Arabian Peninsula that passed through there in order, what they call the, the, the Silk Roads, to reach China's ports. Our Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he started going on trips with his uncle at the age of nine. So there is a lesson there for us that when you find an expert at anything, that expert has put in more than 10,000 hours before he became an expert. And what you'll find, you'll find out that um, a lot of um, this expertise had come about by the time, the, the, from the time the child, the, the person was a ch child, and by the time they, they reached 18 years old, they were already a, an expert. So that is a, a clue um, for us The prophets, the Anbiya were, were not lazy They were busy doing things The prophet Muhammad وسلم, At the age of 15 He helped To, to, um, to Rebuild the Kaaba And also the prophet Ismail Helped his father Ibrahim to rebuild The Kaaba They were people of livelihood you know, people of, of, of enthusiasm and, 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 and zeal and energy. They were energetic and they were doing stuff. Um, they weren't people that used to sit on their hands. So I drew reference from the Quran and the Sunnah and uh, the Anbiya and the Sahaba and the people that followed them just to show and um, just to demonstrate to us, um, to, to relate to us, that this situation that we find find ourselves in of unemployment or you know um, not being able to find our livelihood or is something strange as far as um, we find us, ourselves in a non-Muslim lands in a, in, a, in a precarious situation. And when you consider that 
the Muslim that rules India for a thousand years and they rules Europe for 700 years, what were they doing in India and Europe? You know, were they asking the non-Muslim um, Indians for a job? Or were, were they asking the Europeans for a job? What, what were they actually doing? So um, I, I, I pause there before I, I, I go into um, a part oh. two of this, this session. Okay, so I can smell. Okay, you've given Walaikum us. Salam, I'm gonna be, I'm gonna ask you so you give us a lot of text, a lot of the uh, source from the Quran and Sunda. Summarize it, and how it applies to the Muslim today in this situation. How should well, what should be the, the, what should the, the, what should the Muslim outlook be concerning this text, and what should our mind frame of mind be? Well, uh, the outlook should be that, in truth we do not have any premise to be earning our livelihood in the way in which we earn our livelihood now entirely mm -hmm. um there's some there's always going to be a, a a group of people who 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 have to work for others and there's there's no problem in working for others there's no there's no indignation from it but on a whole what we found um, as advised by the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam, that it is better that someone use, that someone uses some ingenious method, like going to his house, getting an axe and chopping branches of trees to sell to do his own thing. Okay. You use his resources and his his, his initiative. Mm -hmm. to earn a livelihood of his own rather than being dependent on others for um subsistence support from the from the government okay or, do, okay. Or do you think do you think that the social system has made the muslim lazy and less reliant upon allah's risk i i think a, a lack of information um a lack of inspiration from the quran and sunnah i.e. from the Ambiya, studying the lives of the Ambiya and studying the lives of the 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 the, the, um, the Sahaba, the Prophet Muhammad I mean, his companions, and the Muslims who came after that. I think a, a, a detachment from studying our our real heroes, they are our real heroes. Mm -hmm. So, so in regards to how they um, sought their risk and sought their provision, uh, are you saying that the Muslims now have a uh, a bad look on it, or they are lazy, or they're not relying upon? No, they have they a modern outlook. Okay. You know, pe 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 people are victim to to the to the environment and to the circumstances that they that they find themselves in. It's like if you it's 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 like copying copying and imitating the, the people who you, you 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 find yourself with you know at one time in um in 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 africa asia china the, you know the people used to go out and they used to do their farming now all over the world you find people are rushing to the cities to 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 get a job so that they can have their their social life they can they go out on the town they can mix the you know cosmopolitan type mixing and enjoying and sightseeing and going out on the town and they they will leave the city to do this in, in fact our prophet muhammad وسلم, when he was a youth and a shepherd he said to the other shepherd <coughs> some people have come to town or i hear some music and i would like to to go down and to to listen and he got a, a fellow shepherd to look after his sheep and um the next time he realized the sun was beaming down on his head, Allah has actually protected him and actually prevented him from going down to where the music was. No. You know, no. at one time he took off his shirt and a, a, he, he reported that a, a man came down and gave him a slap and told him to put his shirt back on. Mm -hmm. So the Prophet Muhammad so some, as a young man, he had desired to, to do the things that people do. Leave you, leave your 
leave your farming, leave your sheep, leave whatever, and go down and do the free mixing like what people are doing today. Okay? Mm. But he was protected from that. So this is a, this is a phenomenon that it, it didn't just happen, it's not just happening now, it was even happening then. So, so can we now use the so-called COVID lockdown as an excuse um, to complain or to be lazy or to sign on? Uh, or what should the Muslim mindset be when he's under these kind of financial pressures? You know, um, we, have, we have the law, the law of necessity. And... Um, you know, where someone, you know, the, the begging is only permitted in certain circumstances. Uh -huh. If you find yourself in a situation where you cannot do anything better, uh -huh. then you, you are permitted to beg from the government. And I say beg from the government because it's, a, it's an application. You are, make, you are applying. If you don't apply for it, they don't, they don't turn around and give it to you. They don't uh -huh. drop it at your door and say, here you are. This is a stupid here you are, here you are, here you are, here you are. So our Sheikh um, Abu Bakr, he was saying to me that the um, right way he is in our community in, in Aslim, he was saying that the government came to his door and uh -huh. they gave him $3,000. And he okay. asked him, what is this for? Uh -huh. And he said, well, it's a $3,000 for, for you to stay at home because there's COVID-19. He didn't go out and apply for it. Okay. It was something that was given out. So something, someone gives you something and you didn't ask for it. That's not begging. That is a, mm -hmm. something that Allah Azrael has decided out of his mercy to, 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 to bestow on you. That's not, that's not begging. But what, what I'm saying here is this. If you have an ability, Allah is giving you the akal mm -hmm. and he's giving you the resources and he's giving you initiative for you to find a way or make an effort to find a way to earn your livelihood, then you need to seek that way. Where you need to, to seek help, you need to seek help. But you certainly mm -hmm. have been given the, the, the means. If you don't have the physical means to say, go out physically, go and, uh, and do a job, you have the, the mental means. And this is what we want to we wanna touch on today. Okay, well, I'm, I'm going to open up the... Um the zoom meeting to a few of the brothers who might have some questions um i think you can either use the chat or make an indication i'm going to bring in abu Sulaiman first assalamu alaikum abu Sulaiman. wa alaikum salam brother ismail and brother ismail now inshallah do you have any questions or comments on this topic uh, I, I have a, for me, it's a very vast topic. Mashallah, whatever Brother Smile has covered is mashallah mm. is good. But I think I won't, uh, well, actually, actually, just to cut you, just to just to explain that we're trying to um relate the topic to these current situations in regards to who being stressed, the lockdown under COVID. What should the Muslim mindset be in regards to seeking Allah's risk that we shouldn't really be so dependent on? the uh, social services unless it's a necessity I think in today's mindset sometimes we find it too easy to sign on or too easy to take benefits rather than struggling and striving to seek Allah's risk no no I agree I agree what you're saying about regarding the problem I would say would be that many of our brothers and sisters or Muslims in general I would say that you know, especially with the current situation, if, you, if you're not self-employed or if you don't have your own business, we're on the hand and the mercy of those who are providing the job and the risk. So for some of us, you know, long as we are truthful in our words and our speech and the works that we've done for that length of time within that organization, then they will look at it favor favorably because of the trustworthiness and the reliability that you are in. Mm -hmm. But whereas if you start using the COVID situation as a mean by which to basically mess about to, you know, get away to do things which you wouldn't do if there is no COVID situation, then I think this is something that, that needs 
a bit more clarification. Maybe Brother Ismail can say how it is very important that Muslim, they need to be people who are good in the word and the speech, in the jobs they're doing, for them to be kept employed. Whereas many non-Muslims, we know, they want to take as much advantage of doing nothing and getting paid for doing basically nothing. Mm -hmm. I don't know, what do you say, Brother Ismail? What I would say to that is that, how, however, and whatever circumstances that you find yourself in, um, you need to treat the employment, the work that you have, as if it is your own. None of you truly believe until you love for your brother or you love for your sister, what you love for yourself. How would you like that you're, you employed someone and when you employed someone to do a job, that behind your back, they're, they're taking your, your, your property. They're supposed to work for eight hours, they, they're working for six. Okay. They're supposed to be on the phone. <laughs> they're on the phone, all right. But they're, they're, <laughs> they're on WhatsApp, Facebook, and, and TikTok, and blah. You know what I'm saying? They're doing all this rubbish while they're supposed to be taking, taking cells, taking calls. Or, or ringing or ringing prospects for, mm -hmm. for more work and they're not they're not doing that mm -hmm. how would you like that someone you know dealt with your business like that you wouldn't like it mm -hmm. so if you don't like it when you find yourself in a situation where you got to work for somebody else well, why do you do that to somebody else mm -hmm. so I often say to 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 um, the people around me not, not to everybody. I'm not saying that to everybody, but I'm saying that, I'll say that to my sons. I often say to them, look, when you go to work, you need to ensure that you are almost an entrepreneur. And let me just explain, explain what an entrepreneur is. An entrepreneur is where you're on your own doing, doing stuff, generating new, new, new markets, customers, clients. I'm serving them, giving them a, a, a good service. And, and earning a profit. You know, we, we do want to make a, a profit. Um, this thing is about earning your livelihood. I never said anything about getting rich. Um, and I didn't say anything about joining my thing. This thing is about how the topic is, how to earn your livelihood through Allah's blessings. That is Allah's blessings to you, 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 and you. Nothing to do with me. Um, something to do with me because I'm, I'm trying to impart some, some beneficial knowledge um, and experience. And I say beneficial because it's, it's by experience. It's not theory. Like over 30 years sort of experience, Allah Mubarak. You know what I mean? So, okay, this okay, is, so, so sorry to cut you. Can you give me some examples of your experience in business then? Well, my, How you started, my, where you started, where you're at now. Um, and what you found through to your through, from your struggles in starting your own business? Okay, my, my experience it, it, it started off from 13 years old when I used to go out with my my father. My father's um, a, a qualified, well retired electrician. Now he he started off when he was um, 11 years old. By the time he was 15, by the time he was 15, you could you could rewire a, a whole house, and mm -hmm. uh, he came over this country in the, in the 60s. Um, I, I didn't grow up with my dad, but I spent some time with my father. And, and when I did spend that time, I would go out and do the work for, with him as an electrician. Mm -hmm. um, seeing him earn the sort of money that he was earning, I mean, in 1976, he gave me a £20 note. The mm -hmm. wages at that time was £76 a week. Mm -hmm. And he gave me 20 quid. Mm -hmm. And I was thinking, well... I, I say Allahumma barik now, but I was thinking, wow, wow, I got a 20, 20 quid, 13, 14, 20 quid. I bought myself a bike. I bought myself some stuff. I bought myself some other stuff, and I still had change. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So that, that showed me at that young age that you, if you get a bit of knowledge and you're not prepared to sit on your hand and you get up and you, get, and you graft, you can earn some money. So that was the first sort of instance. My second instance is when I, I'm, um, I, I, I wanted to, I wanted to be. He wanted me to be electrician, but it was really, really hard work, uh -huh. too hard for me. But I liked electrics, uh -huh. and I wanted to be an auto electrician. But 
I failed the, the aptitude test, the entrance test to get in. I failed it. It was, it was like maths, and I'm, I'm like, I was rubbish at maths. And uh, maths and physics and all that stuff. Um, but I got into the gas, British gas. But I didn't like gas. So I fell out with British gas um, because they were saying, I can't do my Juma, I can't do my Salah. Um, I, I, I took a job as a labourer. Um, in that time, I applied to be a carpenter. I qualified as a carpenter. But then I found that working as a carpenter meant I'm always on the building site and the, the swearing and the this. And I didn't like that. I went on to site engineering, but it was more slave when I was site engineer. Done mini cabin for a couple of years. Then they were cutting people at their throat and I was in Camden Town, people threatening with gun. I had to walk with knife, got arrested by having a, you know, having a knife, went to, went to prison for three weeks, said, I'm not doing no more mini cabin. And then I said, I'm going to start my own business. And I started in 1990, the company called Black Crescent Fragrances. Okay, one second. Did you ever sign on during your career time? Or I have time? signed on. I, okay. have si- I, have si- I have signed on. Okay. But I tell you what, it's like a drop in the ocean of my, me working for 40 years. Okay. So me signing on, you know? Mm-hmm. So, um, on a whole, I was always working. If you speak to my children, they can always remember me working. And, um, and so I set up this, this, this incense factory um, workshop um, up by Karushu SC5, working with the brothers. Um, it, 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 it gave employment, you know, for, for, for brothers, which is good. A Muslim environment. We had the Tulab with Ilma coming in from Saudi. Whenever they wanted a job, you know, we, we made a job available for them. We had brothers coming from Gambia. Whenever they came, we made space for them so that they could they could earn some money, go back to Gambia and look after their family. And um, that continued until my, my health started to suffer because you sit in your stationery and the dust and the fumes. And, my, and so I sold, I sold that business and um, I, I went to Hajj. And when I came back from Hajj, I was broke. And I went back to my, my, my two box. I took okay. out my two box, went to, jo- went to do a job. And to make a long story short, to make a long story short, washing machine broke down. Um, I came on one evening and my wife said, look, you need to fix this machine. I'm going to the laundry. I'm not going to the laundry anymore. Please fix the machine or, or please go to the laundry. And I decided, I was, I was <laughs> terrible. And I decided I was going to fix the machine. Okay. So I, I get this guy to fix the machine and this guy takes my, he takes my five hours work, 35 pound, five hours work in 15 minutes. And then I said, no, no, no. I said to him, how long did it take you to learn this? He said, not long. I said, would you teach me? He said, yes. How much? 300 quid. And that's how I got started in washing machine repairs. And I'm, and I'm, and I'm still there, fortunately. I'm still there up to today. And that's like going on 20 years now with, with, with my partner, Abdulaziz. Okay. okay. So, so you started the business. Business is tough, as we all know. Throughout your time doing business, when have you had to rely on Allah and make dua to make sure your business is successful? When? All the time. <laughs> okay. Allah, I, I can't say, can I, if, I, if, I, if I say Allah is my boss, Mm. Am, I, am, I, am I messing up with the asma of sifat? What I mean is Allah is my provider. Mm. You, you understand? I don't mean that he's a man mm. giving me wages and you know, a boss, can I get a raise? I don't mean that. You know what I'm saying? But we have to describe Allah with, with how he described himself or how the Prophet Muhammad Sassam described him. Yes? But when I say Allah is the one who pays me, I mean, Allah is the one who pays me. Uh-huh. You know what I'm saying? When I want something, when I want something and I need a raise, I ask Allah for it. And when my, my family asks me for a raise, I ask them to ask Allah for it. MashaAllah. So what, what have you learned then through these, through these years of business then? What can you, what can you uh, impart to us uh, and, and the audience that are listening what are the, some of the key points they should um, 
have when they go into business, especially understanding that Allah is a razak to provide. Well, you see, what when we look at the Anbiya and the Rusul and the Sahaba, there is an underlining theme, there's an underlining background story. And the underlining background story is that a lot of them um, been doing what they've been doing since they were young. I would ask anyone, I mean, I, I started to, I, I use some of the electrical things, the, the electrical installation and techniques and the, the, that my father taught me when I was 13, even, even up to today. And I still do some very, very small, minor electrical jobs. And, and some of the, the, like I said, some of the techniques that my father used me today. You taught me, I use them even up to today. So what's the point? The point is, you need to be looking at what you have an, a natural aptitude for. Because this is, this is the, the, the subject of this, 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 this discussion. How to earn your livelihood through Allah's blessing, especially with the COVID-19. Through Allah's blessing to you, 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 and you, right? Not something that someone has decided to put an advert up and say that I'm, I'm, I want someone working in a warehouse or I want someone working in a, in, in, a, in, a, in this place or that place. But that which Allah has in, in bestowed upon you, it may be that you were very, very, very good at, you know, at being a team leader. So that makes you a natural leader. You are very, very good at being compassionate and counseling people. You know, um, you, you never think anything of it. Or you're very good at making stuff. And then so you might get a friend said, yeah, you're very good, you know, you should take this up. It's very, he said, no, 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 just doing it as a hobby. You know what I mean? You're good at coaching. You are good at support. You're, you're, good, at, you're good at technical stuff. You, you're good with your computers. You, you hear what happened. You're good with your, with your computers for your boss. And you're good at organization and managerial stuff for your boss. But if we turn around and say to you, okay, look, we, we, there's, a, there's um, some money, a grant that's going to be given to you. Yeah, go out now and do this thing for yourself. The very same thing that you're doing for your boss, do it for yourself. A lot of people wouldn't do it. Why? Because they've got the mentality that they need someone to tell them what to do. And they're looking for that secure, that secure job that secure nine to five, 300, 400 pound a week, secure coming every week. But now with the COVID-19, it's not secure anymore, is it? Mm. That's very true. So now we now, have to, we now have to start thinking out of our, our head, our, this head that is now being, that's, it, it's, it's secure. Your, your head is rested, relaxed, because your employee is busting his head yeah, to pay your wages for you. Yeah, to un understand that you got your sick pay, that you got your paternal leave, that you got holidays, that you got this, that you got that, that you got this. Your boss is your boss is when he goes home and there's problems. Yeah, his relationship is being affected. His mm -hmm. time with his family is being affected to ensure that you've got what you need. Mm -hmm. Now. COVID-19, you're not working. Mm. The money that the government is giving you, 80%, you know, is, 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 you might get it, you might not get it anymore. Now what you got to do? You have to start using this now. Mm. And you have to start using the things that Allah has given you an aptitude for from the time you are young. Mm. And you have to start, you have, you have to repurpose that, reshape it, create it, the ibn Allah, to something that will get, earn you a livelihood now. Mm. Because this is what I did. Mm. I did what I learned as a as as a as a, a, a youth. Mm. I've learned that, and um, it's not electrician. And Allah blessed me to see the opportunity of being a washing machine engineer. It's not quite an electrician. I always look, laugh and joke and and tell my dad that he's a real electrician, and I'm just a guy just working in the box. Mm. You know okay. what I mean? And he's a he's a real guy. I'll, so I'll, you have I'll, to use your natural. The natural inclinations, whether it's work, hobby, sport, whatever it is, whatever it is, mm -hmm. to now to now did make it digital to earn your livelihood. Okay, I got a question from uh, Bilal here. 
He said, how can we organize ourselves with the correct people and have the direction to become economically free? Okay, so for example, what is the first step now? You've got an idea. I want to be a washing, uh, washing machine engineer. What's the first step? No, I'll choose something else because that's too easy. Okay, no, not no, but I'm saying you want to do something. What's your first step then? Do you just you want, read about uh, okay. what's the first step? Uh, and, and well, the, you, and, want and, to, and, you want to do something. Mm -hmm. You want to do what thing? You want to the first step. Go on. The first step you should, the first step is that you should find out what it is that you have an aptitude for. Uh -huh. What is it that you have a natural inclination for? Because if you're doing something that you love, you don't actually work, a, do a day's work. You don't consider it as a day's work. You, you are working, you are exchanging your, 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 your work for, for, for cash, right? You yeah. know what I'm saying? You are, it is a, it is a fair exchange, but it doesn't seem like like work and sometimes i said to myself oh man this this washing machine repairs man and i said to myself man man i like my job too much because I, I actually want to leave my job and do something else <laughs> but i really do enjoy my job it's okay. fun okay. Man, I just, you know what i'm saying so that's the first thing the first thing it's got to be something that you have a, a gravity towards and then once you find that then now you can start to organize it so you can start now earning some some cash okay i'm gonna cut you i'm gonna cut you again now now we know that one second uh suleiman uh abu suleiman that our risk is written for us but that risk is not gonna come to you it's not gonna drop down from the sky it's not gonna come to you so you have to go and uh get that risk you have to request it okay Give me some steps as to how we should go look for this risk. So first, first, first thing is find something that you love, okay, you like doing, and then what? Then get organized and go and look for this risk. Can you shed some light on that, please? And well, then there, after that, I'll bring in Abu Suleiman. Well, there, there's certain basic fundamentals that you you got to have when you when you're starting out a business. Um, the first one is it. Is it what you, is it what you really like to do? If you really like to do it, then now you've got to find an audience. You've got to you've got to find your target audience. Who are the people, or what type of people, actually like what it is that you want to do? So, give me an example of someone who wants to do something. Uh, one second. And what I'm going to put out on the chat, if anyone's got any questions, send them in and I'll, and I'll um, put them out. Yeah, what, a personal no. trainer? But one second, let Abu Suleiman come in. Fadl Abu Suleiman. Brother Ismail, I'm just going to expand on what you're trying to say and what the question Brother Ismail put forward. I think what it is, if you compare our situation and the time of the prophets and the messengers and the righteous before us, you know, we're living in a technological age and we're living in a society where certain education, certain qualification are required or needed to, for you to be successful or succeed in what you want to do. So not necessarily it's the case, but generally this is the society we're living in. In the olden days, you know, in our time and even in our time, where practical training on the job training application was there. So sometimes you didn't need to have a high education aspiration or qualification for you to do certain tasks or certain jobs. Mm -hmm. But we're looking at the situation now from what I'm seeing is that even the most minutest basics job, you require a certain form of qualification, i.e. able to read, able to calculate, able to understand some of the basic components of working life skills, etc. which I think that many of the youngsters need to be ingrained and given that motivation and that support that, look, you need to strive hard to achieve certain level of education, i.e., for example, GCSE to A-level, at least the minimum, for, by which you're able to, either you are, like Brother Ismail was saying, that either you have a vision what you want to be and you've got the support maybe from family and friends with the money, then Alhamdulillah, no problem. But we know generally not every kid 
out there is going to have that family support. They may be single parents, they may be just mothers or could be fathers who's got no time other than earning as much to support them. So it comes back to many uh, aspects playing into the life of those of us or those of us families that we are trying to keep our head above the waters mm -hmm. rather than begging, but just to support enough to keep the family happy. So there is the risk that we're talking about, I would say, is a multi-dimensional discussion that needs to be had mm -hmm. uh, from those who are, you know, not working, but who need to work, but they don't want to work because the society has made sure that, especially with the COVID, there are going to be more people unemployed, more people are going to look for the same job compared to in the past. Mm -hmm. And from what I'm seeing is that there's more chance of you losing your job in this situation because like Brother yeah. Smile was saying that, that, that that's, uh, not the, that's not the that's not the that's not the subject of the, the, the topic today. The subject of the topic today is how yeah. can you earn your livelihood through Allah's blessing. And Allah's and I, blessing is what he endowed every single person with everybody everyone has has their risk written for them. Everyone yes. has a, a particular aptitude that he that he may have different to somebody else. There are many, many, many people with qualifications, many people with qualifications mm. that they they struggle when when there's no longer a job for them. And yeah. this COVID nineteen is is gonna be with us now for a while now. So we need to reinvent ourselves. This is the digital age. This is not the age like um what we alluded to later on or uh, earlier on the agricultural age, whereby you got big farmlands and you either are, are a landowner or you're someone who goes on work on the land. You know what I'm saying? Or now we're in an industrial age where in order to, to be able to, 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 to become wealthy or well-to-do, you have to have a big factory. Or you're in the, 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 the age where of new mach machinery and new technologies that come out that in order to, to get software to do a piece of a work for you or to do some photocopying or to do um camera work you know that the equipment was thousands of pounds we are now in the digital age mm. we're in the digital age where the the youngest billionaire the youngest billionaire is in her 20s and how did she earn her first billion what qualification did she have do you know what she was selling no, what she was selling was makeup because she got so many followers that the, 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 the company decided to go, look, you got such a following on Instagram or wherever it is. We're going to give you this stuff. All right. And we share it 50, 50. She, she made 2 billion pound in sales and I gave her a billion. Mm. You okay, know what I'm okay. saying? Because okay. what we're saying, I'm just gonna I'm gonna say this last bit. What yeah. we're saying is like this is the digital age now, right? Where someone you get you're getting people who are young, 13, 14, 15, 18, 20, yeah, millionaires. I'm not saying this is about earning millions. So don't please no one don't get me wrong. You know what I'm saying? You gotta work jolly well hard. You know what I'm saying? Right? Mm. right. Please don't. Please, don't, I don't want to get away from the subject. Yeah. But the the uh, the opportunity to put your thing online, right, um, is as is easier than it's ever 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 been. You can create your product, you can get it online, and you can get it distributed cheap, for for hardly for little or nothing, and you can sell and you can trade. You don't need a warehouse. You only need the numbers. You don't even need to have the product. You can drop ship. You only need to, to be in a, a, a situation where you, you learn how to market. You learn how to get leads coming in to generate leads and people buy and, and you can get paid without having a, a large warehouse, without having you know, large inventories. Mm -hmm. For example... No, I agree with you. I agree with you. But I'm just saying, 
for the for the no, I want, I want to I want the other people to the other the audience to, to be able to because they're there. I want them to be. Able, we can have our discussion uh, later on. This um, okay, I've um, got I've got uh, an, another question. Um, because you mentioned about people, uh, they should find something which they uh want to do or they love or they love to do i mean someone's mentioned a question about finding their talent to make That's an right. income um yeah. how does someone go about finding out what they're talented is there kind of like a checkboard they should do they should write a list cross out things that they like to do or what's the kind of um mental uh exercise they should go through to find out what their what their talent is well, and how can it, how can they make that talent now become an income? If you get what I'm saying. What? Give me an example. Uh, I don't know. Someone likes playing basketball, for example. Oh, that's a good one. Oh my gosh, that's some someone actually actually earned themselves an absolute fortune teaching people how to jump. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. yeah because because you see, look, what what you got to realize. What you got to realize, you don't need to be, not everyone has to know you. You know what I'm saying? And you don't have to be famous for everybody. You only need to be famous for, this is why I mentioned that you need to find your target audience. You, you need to find your niche audience. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, if we go back, you did say washing machine repairs and then I didn't, I didn't accept it, but I'm going to accept it now because I'm going to just talk about something I know for sure. Right. Washing machine repairs. I'm going to say it very, very quickly. Washing machine repairs. What do you think about the market of washing machine repairs? Do you think do you think it's a, um, a saturated market or do you think it's unsaturated? You asking me? Yeah. Uh, I think I always think it's saturated. I think people. It's think saturated. It's saturated. Yeah. It is absolutely saturated. Okay. Mm -hmm. Do you think when we when we first started washing machine repairs that there were major, major, major companies or that there were only small companies and only major now. I presume there were major companies, basically. There were major companies. Yeah. Okay. So the thing is, we managed to be ignorant about Allah's fuddle, and you can do it too. You, 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 you can do it too. Go into a marketplace, and this is what we want to teach you, to be able to go into a marketplace that is saturated if you target your audience because we've targeted our audience when we went started washing machine repairs we were dealing with one a, a particular type of audience mm -hmm. but from learning the keywords making yourself visible making making yourself uh, putting yourself in a situation where you're you're believable where people trust you and and yeah and, and you're confirmed as well other people are saying yeah this guy is okay yeah this guy is trustworthy this guy is honest this guy you know your ratings your reviews by getting other people to beat your drum for you. Yeah. You can make yourself attractive and, and make a, a decent living. I didn't say this is a get rich, you know, everyone everyone's gonna get rich. The title is not about getting rich. The try the title is that earning your livelihood. It's when you can earn a decent livelihood if you select your target audience because the audience that we had 20 years ago, almost 20 years ago, has changed now to audience that can afford to pay us. Ola Mubarak. Okay, I just want to... Target audience. Okay, the next wanna, thing is to find your target audience. Yeah. I just want to kind of summarize it so people can understand where we are, for example. So, for example, from the revelation, from the examples of the prophets, from the example of, you know, the righteous people earning your risk or seeking provision from Allah, was standard practice. There was no social system. There was no social security. People had to go out there and sell firewood. Now, obviously, now we have a um, social security, um, and we can get a bit lazy with that. We can rely upon that. That can mean we start begging. We start taking it easy. We don't strive now to earn our living. Now we have this lockdown. People are getting stressed. Um, obviously, you, you've given the example of how we should go and do business and whatever. Our mindset should be what, Ismail? Just some of what should our mindset be in seeking Allah's risk, and what are the opportunities that are out there right now for all of us? Okay, I'm gonna get. I want, I want to. I want to say something a bit more simple. Then let's mm -hmm. make. Let's break it down. Break it down. Make it 
Yes. Break it down. Right. So Allah forbid, Allah forbid that I'm unable to do washing machine repairs mm -hmm. and I find myself in a situation whereby I can't no longer do washing machine repairs. What do I do? Mm -hmm. You do something that is called hack marketing. Mm -hmm. Now, hack marketing is where where you find the most successful business out there, company that is out there, you go back to the same digital thing. Because you see, if you need housing, you got to go digital. If you need a job, you got to go digital. Um, I'll tell you what, if you need to go and sign on, yeah, go and get money from the government, it's digital as well. You want to pay your car tax, it's in digital. Insurance, everything is so, so everything is digital. So you go to the same digital platform, you find out who is doing the most, who's the most successful person is, you find out where they're getting their leads, where they're getting their traffic, how they're selling, what they're selling for, and then what you do is you create a, a niche now, a specialized niche, where if they're just dealing with rich people, you're dealing with people who are middle income bracket. If they're dealing with middle income bracket, then you're doing something for people who are, who are poor than that. If they're doing five, you're doing two. If they're doing two, you're doing three. If they're doing black, you're doing white. If they're doing five colors, colors you're doing three colors. If they're doing only two services and two prices, you're doing three. You, you, you go somewhere where you know is profitable. Evergreen, there's always a need for. There's always a need for that service. It's profitable. 20 years ago, it's profitable now. Chances are it's going to be profitable in the next 20 years. You emulate them the best way you can, and then you make it original. Yeah, you make it original by having features that they don't have or taking away some cheaper features and making it cheaper, but it's still profitable, or making it a bit more expensive, but giving more value. That makes sense? Yep. That's what gotcha. I would do. Mm. That, that's, that's what I would do. Push come to shove. If I didn't have, I had no money to invest, I had no knowledge, no nothing, I would go and I would find out what is the most profitable um, affiliate business that I can do. Affiliate marketing means you, you get the product belong, belonging to somebody else, you sell it on their behalf, and they give you 50-50 or they give you 40%, or they give you... The, I'm, not, I'm not talking about network marketing. I'm talking about I'm, I'm selling stuff, and I give you my stuff. You go out and sell it, yeah, and then I give you half, or I give you 40%. And you don't need no money down. Like, I'm trusting you with my stuff. And if it's digital, then I don't even have to give you my stuff. It's just now based on the sales that you, that you make. That's what I would do if I had, if I had nothing, inshallah. Quick question. Would you ever despair of Allah's risk? Or would you ever take a haram income? A, Is there a, a reason? Haram, a, a haram income, I can't, I, I, I can't remember taking a haram income. Is there a reason for that? Like... You know, you're pushed into poverty. You're pushed in a situation where you've got no choice. Things are difficult. You, need to you, know, so, you know, sometimes people are pushed into poverty. And they push into poverty, you know. We, we make our istikfar and we make repentance for being pushed into poverty and taking things that is unlawful, you know. And, um, and we do our uh, best to return things to their, 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 their rightful owners. We make amends and we... We, on, on our past actions you know if we find ourselves in that situation but is there a justification for it if you if you make a mistake you need to um, stop your mistake and you need to make amends amends that's toba is that not correct mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So. yeah so mm -hmm. everyone can make mistake but 
the best of those who make mistakes are those who turn in repent, repentance after they make a mistake. So now, so the thing is now, is there a reason now for us to 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 continue doing a wrong thing? Once you realize the mistake, you stop. You you make a you have a regret. You make the intention not to do this the, the that that thing again, and now you do the right thing. So now the the right the right thing is that the internet is there to advertise is free. To distribute your 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 distribution is free. If you've got the right sort of, if it's a digital product, yeah, it's free. You don't not need itinerary. You don't need stock. What you do need, you do need some knowledge on on how to make yourself visible and how to get how to to convert the the, the traffic that comes in into into sales. Mm -hmm. you, you do need that knowledge. Excellent. Excellent. Okay, I want to engage some of the audience. I don't know whether any of the uh, audience have a business. They have a scenario they would like to um, put across to, to the people who are listening. Uh, we would like to now engage some of the audience. If you have any questions, uh, I can un unmute you or you can send it to us in the, in the chat. Uh, can they unmute themselves? Allow, allow people to to unmute yeah. themselves if they have any if they yeah. have any questions no problem we can do that everyone seems a bit quiet one person is waiting wa alaykum as-salam this is abdul hamid kaza al alhamdulillah fadil abdul hamid alhamdulillah abdul hamid ahlan wa sahlan mashallah it's good to hear uh, the brothers mashallah contributing to important topic to be honest with you, mashallah, I don't want to praise uh, Sheikh Ismail Hamza, barakallahu fi. But uh, it kind of reminds me, it reminds me, when I hear you speaking now, it reminds me uh, as a young person coming to Britain and uh, you advising us what you're advising right now, that over the years that we may personally that I benefited from your advice, mashallah, barakallahu fi. Well, yeah, so, uh, I remember sitting in Brixton Masjid, uh, Ismail Hamza, uh, speaking to us as a young brothers, <coughs> sitting in the canteen, the old canteen, advising us <laughs> that we need to go out and we'll do, we need to go out and work, which is the same advice that you, mashallah, given us. Um, the other benefit was, alhamdulillah, as a community, there was a benefit because like Ismail Hamza, he, uh, as he mentioned, he had a, com uh, a company inside um, Black Crescent, yeah. which, subhanallah, you know, <laughs> um, Black Crescent for us that time was single young brothers, mashallah, a lot, more, a lot of us. Uh, uh, were single young brothers there that we used to go and pick up incense from uh, Black Crescent and we used to go out and mashallah we used to make money so that was the benefit uh, that Mail Hamza used to give us not just by advising us uh, that we should go and work but he was providing something to the community that you know six, seven, eight of us we used to go on the street and sell incense and to make uh, our livelihood with that, you know. Barakallahu fi. But what, no. what, at the same time, what I want to contribute, what I want to say as well, is that this is the mindset that we should have as a Muslims. Not only that we think of ourselves, how can I make money, how can I get a job, and when we get our job or whatever we're doing, we work in, we providing for our family, and we shouldn't be just satisfied with that. We should if always think for the community, for the new generation, for the next generation. You know, how can we benefit the next generation, or how can we benefit our community? You know, either by advising them uh, or by creating jobs that will help the community. I think this is the most for me. This is something that 
inshallah I would like to do and that we are planning something like that as well but it's something that how can as a Muslims uh, how can we benefit the community and what can we do you know to provide something that the next generation you know we could uh, follow or could have something that would make it easy for them you know so if we so they don't have to start from the scratch so every generation have to contribute something so we as a community if we start something small now and and maybe whatever uh, business or anything that we start maybe we might not complete it but inshallah the next generation can just carry on with what we left rather than they going that rather than the next generation going confused like they don't know what to do and where to start so i think it's quite important as a community uh, to create jobs and to have businesses and mm. to come with ideas that what can we do uh, as a Muslims to be independent at the same time as a Muslims how can we have been independent and be uh, having our own businesses that will affect even non-Muslims that we can help even non-Muslims that comes to the da'wah at the same time that they can look at us and say the Muslims are doing well at the same time they're helping their community in Muslim or non-Muslims you know I think the main aim is obviously is is whatever we do is to please Allah and to make the religion of Islam look uh, to show it in the best manner so I don't know <clears throat> what you think but inshallah soon uh yeah i'd like, I'd like to say um, something on that if i yeah. if i can okay. yeah jazakal khairam abdul hamid it really brought, brought a, a joy um to to my heart um remember being with all the brothers and um you know now i'm going into the the, the houses of, of of strangers and um in in those days you know um mainly the people that used to be, um, well, the people that used to be with me all the time were Muslims. And we had some some customers that were non-Muslims, but mainly we used to have the, a, a lot of the people that used to go out and sell, the traders, used to be you know, Muslim traders um, that would come on a regular basis and come and pray with us and eat with us. And it was really joyous. And I really do miss those days. And... Um, but you know, if you don't have your health, you don't, you don't, you don't have anything. So I, I had to leave. You know, when you're coughing up dust and you know you, you're starting to sweat perfume, you're sweating perfume, and you go in the toilet, and you know, what's coming out of you is perfume, and that's not good. So mm. you, got, you have to, I had to knock that on the head. But in term, in reference to Abdul Hamid, Jazakallah Khair, I mean, absolute pleasure. Um, and um, yeah, it just it brings up feelings of, of, of warmth and love. Um, I remember those days. They were the, they were the good old days, and and they can come again. Mm -hmm. um, we are starting something like a. It's kind of like an academy, and we're starting something up. Um, for, for anyone who's interested in in anything like that, just contact us. Oh. Um, not, it's, it's um, but we are starting something up like that um, for for the for the youth. It's mainly for the youth. Um, so yes, yes, Achim. Yeah, so can I bring in Abdul Aziz? I think he's got a, a question. Yes, yes, comment. yes. Yes. Salam alaikum, Abdul Aziz. Fadal. Wa alaikum salam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Wa alaikum salam wa I just to say jazakum Allah khairan for um, arranging this uh, this talk or this discussion. Mm -hmm. And uh, jazakum Allah khairan. I think it's something that, um, inshallah, I think there should be uh, definitely some sort of uh, follow up. Spin off. From, mm. Yeah, from from what has been discussed, so we can actually put some of these things into action, inshallah. Um, all I just w wanted to add, really, was that again, just to emphasize um, the, the the importance of using this opportunity while we're in, you know, now another lockdown, 
who, you know, draw close to Allah Azza wa Jal, first and foremost. Um, and then after that, you know, look and see, you know, what opportunities are out there. It's not the first lockdown and it's not the first time that maybe someone's been out of work <coughs> or had some sort of difficulty. Um, and this is what brings about new opportunities when you have these types of challenges to look to see, well, okay, could it be through illness, could be through no job. And then you've got to find yourself in a situation where you've got to now look at doing something a little bit different. Um, one of the things that can really help that with that, just to add as a second point, is you know, networking with other people, getting together with people that are maybe already doing what you feel you'd like to do or something close and benefiting from them. And, um, and that's the third point is really where, you know, you find that a lot of great things can happen with the community is when the community actually gets together. You know, Allah says, So we'll cooperate upon, you know, those good things. And in reference to um, what Ismail mentioned and Abdul Hamid mentioned about what was done in the early days, it was that type of mentality of community getting together, doing things together that brought about a lot of strength. And I think for where we are now, where there is an apparent um, division, that's where you have. Um, the weakness so we need to get back to that and <clears throat> the last point I wanted to mention is this is the last point I wanted just to mention is that there are things already happening in our community right now there are young people in the community uh, running businesses um, opening shops doing trade and I think from where we are yes we can establish new things and we can do things but there are other things already going on that basically needs a support if we all decide that tomorrow we're going to put together some money and open a shop and then there's no one coming to the shop that business is doesn't get the support is not likely or less likely to succeed so the point i wanted to make is that we can actually start cooperating from now and using each other's uh skill sets and resources so the brother for example he's a driving instructor he shouldn't be short of work there's a brother who's a teacher he tutors children maths english he shouldn't be short of work there's a brother who he's a mechanic or electrician or whatever the thing you know mm. it's 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 we've, we've now got the opportunity to come together and actually put in our resources and and, and build together that's what I just wanted to mention on mm. points. Because I feel that as long as we are, if there's that kind of division, um, and again, you know, that's born out of many, many different reasons, um, you know, we, we'll, have that, we'll have that challenge. Mm. You know? and, and again, I said, if, if somebody, if a few people do well in the community, again, it gives them the ability to help others as well. Yeah, you know, can, I, can I ask a question, others? Is, do you think that the community and a you can put whatever name or whatever you want to put on the mean of community is underachieving. Meaning with the position we're in now, we should be doing better. So we're kind of making up there's some urgency into working together and building. Um, I, I, um, it depends where you're going to measure it from, to be honest. I mean, if you're going to measure it for the last 20 years, someone could argue, okay maybe we could have some other things could be better but the thing is in in some areas depending on what angle you're coming from in some areas and business in regards to business be business finance stability i think i think to be fair and to be brutally honest i don't think from what i the little the very little that i've observed i haven't seen that many people have had you know the business sort of background education perhaps you know I know when I was growing up in the community it was basically, you know, get your qualification, get a job, get out of the country. It was yes. never a thing of, you know, stay and set up a shop. What do you mean set up a shop? No, no, no. You need to be out of here. Mm, got you, got you. And that has been the and that has been basically the, the, the idea that has been pushed for the last two decades. Mm. Mindset should be changed now to be we're gonna be here, it's time to build. 
I think, you know, again, there's a reason for that, why, you know, people are going to, why that's there, you know, for people to go to a place where they can better practice their dean. That, that's, that's always going to, going to be there. Mm-hmm. Should we build? I think, you know, we, we should just put in whatever um, systems or mechanisms that can just continue to benefit our community for those that are here. Do that, yes. Because mm-hmm. those who, those, in the absence of that, people have now, you know, 15 years, 15 years later looked at, oh no, we didn't actually build anything. So that might be where the thing is, oh, we need to play catch up. That could be where the idea comes from. Yes. The reality is everybody is not going to pick up and leave you on go. And there are some people that are going to stay here and give dawah and do different, and do different, different, different things. Mm, 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 mm. But I would just say the best time to start is now. If it wasn't done before, then just start now. Start cooperating. Start, you know, actually, I think, you know, like I said, supporting each other. Like I said, there are people who've up and coming within our community over the last five, ten years. They've actually got shops in Brixton. They own that shop. You yes. know, and I think it's time we actually, you know, maybe, you know, you know, invited them to calls like this, you know, and got more engagement, you know, get more engagement and offer the support. Mm-hmm. I hope that's been uh, helpful. Yes, it's been very, very helpful. Um, yeah, okay, we're going to be closing up now. So I don't know if anyone has any question before we um, close up the meeting. I just I wanted to see if you could maybe speak to um, those that have actually you know sacrificed their evening um, to be here. We've got yeah. about uh, excluding the host and the. the, the yeah, I've, I'll put out the question on the chat. If anyone has any any questions, please put your questions forward or unmute yourself. Uh, put the hand up. I can come to you and unmute you, but everyone seems to be shy or a bit quiet. Yeah. In 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 the, in the meantime, until until someone has a question, so I'd just like to say that the whole the whole thing about um, what's been said before, Jazakallah Khair, Abdulaziz, um, your contribution, Abdul Hamid also, Jazakallah Khair, and and yourself, Ismail, and um, Jazakallah Khair, and um, what I like to say though that the 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 whole age that we live in living in now, this technological age, um, we need to be online. Um, okay. I, I, I know quite a few of our children. Um, uh, when I say a few of our children, I don't mean all my children. I mean um, my child as well as other people's children. I know, um, and um, they are abroad. Um, they are abroad and they, 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 they don't have to worry about whether, you know, um, the, the hosts of that country is going to allow them to teach English or not because they're not teaching English. These, these are the IT guys yeah. and girls there. I mean, you can be on the moon and run your business from there. And um, as long as you can, you can get, do your shopping and do your, whatever you need to do on the moon and exist there and you get your money sent out to you so you can spend it. You don't have to be here on earth. You know what I'm saying? But while you're here on earth, you could be anywhere on earth you like. Once you get your digital thing sorted out, which is what we plan to do, but like I was saying to you, that we, you know, I love this washing machine thing so much. Am I ever going to leave it? Is what I'm saying. But for those who are who take to the digital waters, like how a duck takes to take to water, they 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 can be anywhere. They can make their hydra and earn their money because what actually stops what what makes people come back come back is when they go to gambia when they go to egypt when they go to saudi arabia and for some reason they're told you know you got to leave or if not in gambia you're told to see you're never told to so far in 20 odd years or more you're not told that you, you know you you have to leave you have to come back because your your money's run out so you have to come here and come back to work and, and then go back again, which is what, 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 what people are doing. But if you got yourself sorted out, what do you need to live in a, in a Muslim country? You know, if you're, if you're earning a thousand pound a month, which is 250 pound a week in some Muslim countries, that, that is all you need. So this thing of getting yourself online and earning your live love on high line. I mean, my, my last words 
um, are going to be, I, I, I saw a, um, um, a fitness trainer and um, I was on his computer and I was saying, well, what, what, what are you doing, bro? Because people ask me, how are you doing? How's the work? And I said, yeah, work's fine. And I said, what do you do? And I take the opportunity to go do my own little survey. I do my little survey and I ask people. And he said, well, I'm a fitness trainer and um, I got subscriptions um, where people just go into my, my gym. It's a virtual gym, do their work here, and they pay $10 a head. And all I'm doing is checking the numbers and checking that the system is up and it's operating. Mm. And I said, so, so how many um, subscriptions have you got then? He said, I've got hundreds and they're all, all over the world. Mm. So this is what I'm talking about. I'm talking about he, he was a fitness trainer. And he realized that he's working himself into the ground. And if he gets injured, he can't operate. And he took his thing online. Okay. So to go digital. Turn your skill into a digital product and then sell it. And then you can earn an income from anywhere, from anywhere in the world, is what you're that's saying. That's what people that's what people are doing right now. I'm not it's mm. it's it's not a discussion point in terms of can we do it yes we can people are doing it mm -hmm. right now right now Ismail people are doing so much different things this is the digital age you know be there or be square bro you you know you really really we really really need to be in this digital thing or, or, or else when the government says you can't work what are you going to do they say to you tomorrow Ismail you can't go out in old buildings, like man. You're done. What are you gonna do? Give you a call. Tell me how to fit washing, washing machines, brother. No, I'll find something to do, bro. Listen, listen, bro. It's don't wait until, for them to call you. No, no, no that, I get you. I'll give you a call today. though. Something happened. I'm gonna give you a call though. But anyway. yeah, uh, I'll, I'll be waiting as <laughs> <this>, well. <bro. laughs> I'll give you a call, bro. <laughs> you okay. call me, I won't call you. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, we're gonna have to, we're gonna have to um, round it up now. Um, it's been very, very beneficial. Zafalak and Ismail for your presentation. Um, I think it is about having that mindset. We need a follow up, though. Definitely, we need a follow up. I've got some ideas, but I'm gonna keep them. You know, I'll, I'll, no, I, uh, I, I, I follow up to this. Yes, a follow it's up coming. to this is a follow up to this is whenever it's it's my turn to go around next. I will follow up. Okay. Your ideas, you 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 Keep it can to myself, yeah. You, no, no, you can implement them. Yes. You can implement them, but what I'm following up on is is stuff that I haven't even touched on today. Okay, okay. All right, yeah. we're we're, we're, we're we'll arrange a time for that. Thank you everyone for you. for listening. Um, we'll be we'll be putting up this video on our website on Facebook. Yeah, it's give me so a cut, Ismail. Send me a cut, bro. Yeah, I might, I might actually digitize this video and, and start. You know what I mean? Digital. digital. Yeah, go digital. Um, so yeah, Jacqueline, for listening and spending your time with us. I hope it was beneficial for you. Um, watch out for more videos and thank you for, for participating. And so you know, like, hold on, hold on one second. I have one message from someone. I don't know if it's a question. Uh, some which is off the topic, I'll deal with that uh, privately. Yeah, so thank you for listening. Inshallah, look out for the next. Actually, every Wednesday at eight o'clock, we'll be having a Zoom meeting on different topics, not necessarily about seeking Allah's risk. So, um, look out for the flyer. Look out for the information about Insight to Islam. And inshallah, we hope to see you attending uh, next week. Inshallah. So for myself. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.